welcome to the show. Kelly, how are you? What's up? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> the most <laughs> kind we ever are is off the top of the show. It's only it makes me think of it because when you go to Instagram, you'll see like uh, the clip and it will only go to a certain point unless you want to open up the IGTV. So I feel like if anyone just saw our intro and our early exchange, it's like, hello, hello, you know, and I just like, I don't know that we're that sweet. So it makes me laugh. So, so nice and friendly. We're totally fooling everyone. <laughs> so next time I talk to you, I'm gonna be like, yo, Kelly was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me tell you about my difficult people week I'm having of my very own right now. Um, I, you don't remember, I told you I broke my elbow. So I don't know if anybody's yeah. ever had this injury. Apparently it's like a very unique injury, but I broke my little bitty elbow in three places. Damn. So I've been trying to exercise it and trying to do stuff, but I'm very animated when I talk and I talk a lot with my hands. And so from the past two episodes, now you'll notice why I'm like so tight and all one-sided because <laughs> I'm kind of lopsided. That's been giving me a really hard time recently now that it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. So um, if I'm making weird faces or anything like, you know, sorry. I noticed <laughs> it when we were, you know, and I just talked about our social media, we were cutting our social media clips and our photos or whatever. And um, a lot of the photos had me being very animated, handsy, you know, like just, you know, when I explain something, I'm explanatory. And I noticed uh, from knowing you since 2003, you're a bit the same way. You tell a good story. I remember like hanging with you sometimes. You'll be like, oh, let me tell you a story about Sundance, this, that, and the other. Like you always came back with a story. Um, and now I see you just. <laughs> I know. Because well, of... I usually kind of act it out, right? Well, this happened and this. And like, I'll give you kind of like a little bit yeah. of play. And now I just, I can't do it. <laughs> you're and, the and I keep like trying. And it's just mm. like, no, this is about as much as I can do. <laughs> you're like the equivalent when like they say how like a uh, young, young guy when we're in high school we'll like tell a story about a fight oh and then he was like boom and then he did yeah. this like <laughs> yeah. you're you're the female version of that and you've always been that so to do the show with you has been like oh my gosh she's just a bobblehead so now we told the world why and you are That's feeling better good. though a I'm feeling bit? better I'm yeah I'm feeling better I still can't fully straighten my arm which is a little annoying but I do have way more of movement I'm super excited because when I first broke it I could barely do this Mm -hmm. And now I can do this. Watch out now. Amazing. Let's get you to the Guinness <laughs> Book of World like Records. World. Let's get into this. I'm ready. Yes. Guinness <laughs> Book of World Records. She could do it all. <laughs> um, Pledge Week. I like the episode. Before we start talking about the breakdown of the episode, I wanted to ask you just how you feel about recapping it. It's interesting, right? Like the third episode, like this is the third time I feel like we have immersed ourselves in all things Billy and Julie. Um, how do you feel about it? I really it's it's really interesting because of how long ago the show was on now I mean it, it really well, wasn't that long ago but yeah. it seems like a what so so long ago but to me jumping back into it and getting back into this world and just kind of everything that's going on now with with COVID and you know I'm an entertainment publicist by trade so my world specifically and anyone in the entertainment industry at all it's kind of been really shook for us and it's it's kind of fits into my everyday life again which is really yeah. interesting to me because i can it feels like i can slide right back into it and it's super relevant and timely right now so i i really am glad that we decided to do it at this point for as long as we've been talking about it i always say the shit show that was 2020 um i always feel <laughs> like two things would have at least allowed humor to get you through and it would have been if the late joan rivers was still here because i would have loved right. to hear her take on 2020 and the other <sighs> one would be difficult people if the show was still on the air how they would have attacked stuff that was going on i sometimes wonder um i guess uh you know will ferrell has the iheart podcast which has to do with um What's what's the San Diego San Diego anchor? What is the what's the name of that? Oh, call? Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. Well, yes, yes. But it's um, a Anchorman. Anchorman. I'm like, why did I not think of the name of that movie? <laughs> yes, yes. So, but but I remember hearing, um, and I guess it's been for a while now. But they were doing a um, podcast in the character. I almost feel in the Ron Burgundy character, uh, not yeah. Will Ferrell. I almost would love a Julie Klausner. Uh, no, 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 Kessler and a Billy <laughs> Epstein, Epstein. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> podcast to get through 2020. But, you know, we're through 2020. It happened. And now we're going to talk about Pledge Week. Oh, and by the way, uh, speaking about something fun, uh, a giveaway, we'll do that after the breakdown, too, that Kelly uh, put on Twitter. So Pledge Week, let's get into it now. So the episode opens up with 
Billy having a bartending gig on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live. And if anybody's seen that show, it's what, you know, you interview celebrities and then there's a bartender that makes them drinks and they're having a good time. Yeah. Well, the guest from that show isn't a fan of Billy's and wants him out. It's kind of a <laughs> me or you thing. So Andy Cohen comes in and has to break the news. And Julie's in the dressing room with him, of course. And he's like, what, you know, what's going on? Well, who's the guest? And we find out it's Chelsea Handler. Yeah. Oh, she's so, so funny. She says what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but who would have thought she was that sensitive? <laughs> oh, uh, well, and you know, what's good is like the show came out the gate really early when it came out. Difficult people in 2015, because they they sort of maybe talked about Lena Dunham a little bit. Maybe talked about Chelsea Handler a little bit like they weren't like mm -hmm. they weren't um, walking scared. They were jumping in. And we're going to take on oh, every yeah. everybody. Um, and, uh, at that time, Chelsea Handler was still kind of coming off her show into Netflix. Um, so I thought it was a fun dig. Um, I don't know that she necessarily is sensitive, but it was a nice, cool, <laughs> fun dig at the time. What I love too, is like the recap culture in that era, you know, 2015, this is, right. this is Julie, Julie's character, uh, Julie Kessler saying well yeah i did a housewife recap and um you know it, it yeah because andy <laughs> knows who she is and he's like yeah you know you said something horrible about you know the, the housewife reunion i was feeling very pretty that day yeah and <laughs> i was in ralph lauren not gucci <laughs> and i was beautiful <laughs> so it uh, seems like you know it kind of sets the tone <laughs> for the episode where they're thinking okay you know billy has this revelation that every time he's mean to a celebrity he loses a gig yeah. She's like, okay, I got to be nice. Like, it's enough. Like, I got to be nice. And which you know, Julie Julie's thinks like, is terrible. Right. This is like, this is our thing. This is what we do. Well, because Julie's so self involved, even when um, talking to Andy Cohen and like saying, you know, what she said in the recap, and he's like, you know, giving her like, oh, that kind of sucked. Her thing is like, oh, well, it's all about me yet again. She's like, well, you know, it was hard because I had to do 300 words by this time. Like, it's just right. such a self, self involved person that we like for the show. So when Billy does approach her with the idea of like, oh, let's try to be nice. You know, Perez Hilton did it. Maybe we could do it. She's like, OK, I'm going to be your supportive friend. But for the record, <laughs> let it be noted that I'm not about being nice. Not one bit. Um, so we love our Julie for that, for sure. Well, and we kind of see throughout the episode, too, just how self-involved she is, even more so than we've already seen. It kind of digs a little deeper in her relationship with Arthur. Yeah, you know, so at this, you know, this episode kind of centers around hit, the pledge week is his for PBS. So he works at PBS pledge week is all about them getting donations to keep the station afloat. Keep the lights it's on a public, yeah. public access network. And he's really stressed out about it. He's really frustrated. And he actually gets upset and actually lashes out at Julie, which is something we hadn't really seen. He's always, you know, kind of nice and understanding and kind of you know, just brushes her off. But right now, you know, one of the things he points out is like, you know, you're always so supportive of Billy. Why can't I get just a piece of that? Like, that's all, that's all I'm looking for. Well, and she's he, making it about her. Yeah. I mean, even in the sentence of her getting invited to something, he tells, uh, she says to Billy, oh, don't worry. Like, you'll always be invited because you're my plus one. Like, it's already like he's having a bad day. She's already not paying attention to him. And then right. when something good happens, it's going to go to Billy and not the not the boyfriend. Like, that's right. crazy. So I'm glad, Arthur. Um, what did he say? What am I like, uh, you know, minced ham or something like that? Like, <laughs> he, he just. He and he just, actually called her by her full name, her real name. He didn't call her noodles. He called he her Julie. He didn't call and her. And she was like, oh, you said my real name. She recognized, yeah. you know, they're watching PBS and it's one of his co-workers on and it just stresses him out even more, frustrates him. And he's like, I'm going to bed. Turn that off. Yeah. Like, I can't deal with it. And he so, just he wants some support. And she's instead giving ideas and trying to fix it. And that's kind of her way, I think, in her mind of being supportive and helpful. And it's just really not what he's looking for. And it's not really working yeah. because to him she's just making it about her and he's like this is not about you and i think in her mind she thinks she's actually being helpful to offer up ideas to make things better and there that's where the, the they're just both like missing each other's point we have some dilemmas early on are we going <laughs> to yes, be nice to celebrities can i read the quote that i thought was just so interesting too um, <laughs> yes please before we get to the next part because we this episode had a lot of uh guest stars which is is um 
they came in swinging for sure. Oh, they so, sure did. It was full uh, of them. A couple of quotes I wanted to say just be, before we leave this uh, opening here, which is, uh, I was banned from Bravo, which was Billy Epstein. And then uh, it's Chile, uh, and it's Chelsea Handler's fault, uh, Julie Klausner. Uh, Kessler, I always mess that up. How dare me? <laughs> uh, but then when they're going on and talking, she goes on to say, talking shit about celebrities is what we do, okay? It's the only thing that comes more naturally to us than breathing air. That I almost <laughs> feel like maybe needs to be put on a t-shirt at some point, a Viridian Row t-shirt, maybe. I mean, maybe, that can be, maybe, a, that can be maybe, our maybe, quote, of the, uh, the quote of the week for this week. I mean, you never know. Maybe that's the one that they'll do. <laughs> uh, no, that's a great one. That is definitely a great one. And it's, it's, it's funny how being mean to other people is what comes naturally to them because being nice yeah. is just difficult. Yeah. And it's funny because at that time, the 2015 versus now, like now everyone's being a little too, like they're crossing a line. This is again, what I always say about this show was sweat the small shit kind of a thing. N now people are going way in there and trying to, you know, there's takedowns and, you know, some of them of course are rightfully so, but it's, it, it this was mindful, mindless, like, you know, Chrissy Teigen is corny kind of a stuff. It wasn't like they were really being mean. Let me just put it out there. They weren't really ever mean. They were just, uh, you they were know. just taking little jabs. They were yeah. just giving little digs. Cause like the Chelsea Handler thing was just like basically, you know, in insulting her show and kind of like taking a jab at her a little bit. And, yeah. and, you know, that's kind of like what they do. It's never, I mean, mean is mean, but it's not, you know, they, they're doing, I guess if there's, if there's a level of meanness, like theirs is a little bit more lighthearted, you know, and a little dirtier sometimes, <laughs> but it just depends on what they're talking about. But I like that she's like, okay, well, fine, then I'm just going to leave and I'm just going to, you know, leave you alone because maybe you need to be alone. And she's like stomping around, well, I'll just take my toothbrush <laughs> or maybe I'll buy one and I'll just take the dogs and the dog beds and my jacket, and my purse. And she's like narrating the whole thing and he's like, fine, go, bye. And you know, I'm as she's take... walking out, and as you can see, I have my my baby in the back right here. She, uh, so if you hear her snoring, she's taking a little nap. Her little oh, puppy okay. paw was hurting, and she follows me around everywhere. So I let her lay here. I know, but what I can a... hear her snarty, starting starting to snore. Dog. So if you Cute hear her, the... oh, good, it's not my uh, stomach growling. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Julie that... grabs everybody, goes to her mom's house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, when she gets there, you see she's been crying. So she's clearly upset. She's upset that Arthur's upset with her. But I don't think she fully really understands why he's upset with her. I don't think she, like, gets it on the level to which he needs support from her. What do you think about that? Well, no, he doesn't. Uh, she doesn't get it. But also, you know, it's not like Marilyn comes in with, like, great advice as well. Marilyn's like, well, that's what you get for dating a drunk. You know, it's like Marilyn is not helping the cause. Julie's not actually figuring it out on her own her thing was just to retreat you know but it's still good to have mom there uh, as a support and um the best maryland moment um you're you're a dog person but the the, yeah. the best maryland moment was like can we leave the dogs outside I know. she's like welcome welcome home honey but can you leave the dogs outside no she's like no they're they're <laughs> they're my babies <laughs> why don't they why don't they live in cages because they're not birds mom I can't believe Marilyn. I can't believe busy body Marilyn. But what's good about her is she will take in her daughter because that just opens up space for her to um, like tell her what to do. That's that's why she yeah. does it. She's like, well, oh, I good. Like she asked her, so so you know, how long will you be kind of gracing us with your, the, you know, with your presence or however she worded it? And yeah, she's like, well, until Arthur stops being mad at me. <laughs> Yeah. So she really just, there's no, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She just took off to prove a point and now she's kind of stuck and waiting to see if she can kind of turn this whole thing around. Julie's going to have to do some uh, deep thinking and figure out how to save, uh, save her man, you know, and, and also well, do and it what's in a respectful better place way. to do that thinking than at drag queen bingo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just have to stop down for a moment and talk about this. I think every time I see Kate McKinnon on SNL, I think I somewhat reflect back to Abraka Douglas uh, at the cutting room. Uh, you know, she's just so good. She's Williamsburg, William, William, Williamsburg, uh, premier um, sober magician. It's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing. She's pulling AA chips out of his ear, like not a quarter out of your ear. Let me pull a 30 month AA chip out, a 30 day, 30 day. AA She's so out. good. The guest stars in this episode were uh, <laughs> top notch. And um, for me, it was like, not that 
she was already great, but like the way she does this Abraka Douglas thing, I love the way Billy was like, oh, so is this, um, so, so you're the premier um, one. So there's more <laughs> sober magicians in Williamsburg that are just <laughs> popping around. Like, it's just, it was good. And even Julie, like, what are you doing with my friend? <laughs> like, don't hurt my friend. What's going on? Yeah. Get the, what's and, going on? Is this fantastic or really trash? You know, we don't know. I know. It's so funny. Like, yeah. he's so confused as to what's going on. And it's, <laughs> It just she's, cracks me up because she is she's phenomenal in the different characters that she does. And, you know, she really like leans into it. And, you know, if you didn't know her from anything else, then that's definitely the character you would see if you saw her on, you know, if you saw her out on it's SNL, she's always great. And I, I don't know who the next like big, you know, SNL uh female uh superstar is you know it seems like Kristen Wiig was the biggest but to me mm-hmm. like the Cecily Strong and Kate McKinnon they they are the ones that really are what is it oh, 80, no, 80, Br- 80 Bryant oh 80 like Bryant that. she's great they yeah. really take me in but every single time I watch SNL and I do watch it um I always uh, remember Kate McKinnon as Abraka Douglas and it's just it's so good for me uh, <laughs> it's just so good for me and it's good for Billy too because Billy um finds a potential uh hookup which this became a fun part of the show one it one, did. Of, one of the things another love- great guest star fred fred who is played by john benjamin hicks who you know is, is a great actor you see you know see him in a bunch of different things and you know he yeah. jumps in to you know kind of defend africa and be like yes yeah, she's awesome she's great i'm such a huge fan and is kind of explaining her a little bit to Billy and Julie. And then Julie is the best wing woman ever. She's asking the questions. So are you in the entertainment industry too? Are you single? Okay, then I'm out. <laughs> yes, yeah. Without question. Like she knew, she's like, Billiam, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, have fun. Enjoy yourself. Because he looked like a great, Um, he looked great. Like he looked like Pretty, everything yeah, was like, natural. Yeah, you know, hardcore potential right there. And um. But Billy, though, Billy had um, his, his reasons not to like him. And I guess we all have our reasons not to like the perfect guy. Right. Like, it's just like, well, it's, you know, he's a dentist, which is interesting. So it gives him something new to talk about. And he makes a date with him. And on their first date, Billy spends, you know, a lot of the time we see him talking about how disgusting he thinks looking into people's mouths are. Yeah, it's really about and, the tongue, know, Kelly. <laughs> So they're kind of talking about that and, and, you know, he takes him to a show mm. and, you know, he's educating him on who all the people are and Mark you know, Shaman's there. Really yep. into, yeah. He's getting into it. And he's like, it's so cool that you know who these people are. I love that. Right. Wh- which and I kind of, I'm going to ask you though, real quick, just off topic. Like, do you yeah. like the idea of dating outside of your industry, so to speak? Cause from the looks of it, it does seem like the right thing to do. You know, it's so, it's so connectable. Is that a word? Connectable, connect connectable yeah, uh relatable if, if the person also does similar things that you do and lives on your pace and your lifestyle but like that was a really cool thing the fact that they were like you know learning about each other i love how when billy was at the cafe he says well he he has a job he's an actual adult i think i say right. adult like that in my day-to-day sentences <laughs> all the time from from that moment um so i don't know I like what do you have, like to do i kind of have what are your rules relationship with that? Because on the one hand, you know, as a publicist and somebody in, you know, in entertainment, I do a lot of different things, but when you date someone that's in my experience, when I've dated people that were in my same industry, you end up just talking shop most of the time, Mm. because then you kind of figure out what each other does. And then you, you know, it just, it, it becomes always mostly talking about work. And then it's, like I talk about work all day. I don't really want to talk about work right now, but depending on what, you know, I, I, I've run into that a lot personally, but then I started dating somebody that's not in the industry, like at all. And that has its challenges too, because then they don't understand the crazy schedules Mm. and, you know, the taking off to go here and there and all the different events and all, you know, the partying that we do just, when making deals and doing things because it's not really like an office kind of thing right so when you have a regular you know like a dentist a lawyer a banker a doctor you know whatever you have a different you know your life runs on a different kind of scale than the entertainment industry does I mean I'm making deals at dinner at 11 o'clock at night you know negotiating things and setting up interviews and doing whatever you know and maybe I don't do any of that during the day it's all at night 
mm. you know, showing different things. So it's just it's a good that question though. Yeah, difficult. like what's like the... how do you get someone to understand that you're not like stepping out because you're going out at night with mm. somebody from the opposite sex because they don't understand that that's how you do business because it is it seems weird. I, I so, guess the part the part that I liked the most was that they were sharing from each other. There was like I- intrigue, and it's like for me, I'm thinking like, yeah, maybe I maybe someone in education would be great for me you know uh so yeah like as much as it feels like you want to have a like-mindedness like maybe no maybe it's like oh there's somebody in education that has like such a stability about it you know um Mm -hmm. you know I guess education isn't the best but if they can handle your instability then that's when it works that's kind of like because it has its pros and cons right you have something new to talk about and you have something great and it's, you get, ex- and I think that's kind of a little bit of the disconnect between Fred and Billy. It's because, you know, when you're not in this kind of thing all the time, you get excited about it, Chaos, you know, and, and he becomes the participator, oh, right? Wait, okay. Wait, before. So uh-huh. yeah. So you're saying you become like Billy becomes jaded because he's, right. he's in this hamster wheel. So then you mm-hmm. get to see it through the eyes of somebody like like frank who oh another line that frank said that i thought was funny fred. They, they fred fred mm-hmm. fred and frank i'll take them both now um <laughs> one, of, one of the things uh fred said was like oh um oh julie goes oh so you're single you you alluded to that a second ago he's like yep i'm single and rested <laughs> i don't know why i thought that was so funny <laughs> so next time somebody asks me i'm gonna be like yep i'm single and i'm rested okay i'm ready So you're ready to go yeah, yeah i thought that was really funny um but yes okay so back to you <laughs> And no, that's just what I mean. It's like, I think, you know, he got a little jaded and, you know, Fred was so excited to be in, you know, around all of this. And he was really just trying to have a good time. And I think, you know, Billy was kind of the buzzkill about it and, and, you know, criticized him for being a joiner and being, you know, a participant and actually getting involved and having fun. Like there was something wrong with that. Okay. So you could say that, but how did you feel about it when you watched it? Cause I actually did do an eye roll too. Like, Oh, a participator. Like that's, that would be not what I would like. So I was kind but see, of, but that's because you are jaded just like Billy. And <laughs> so am I, because I did the same thing. And then you stop and think about it, but why would we do that? They're having fun. Like they don't do this every day. They don't go to a show every day. They don't, you know, so why not a little bit of fun? Not I, so fun? Yeah, like, there's always there's always that thought process. Just let everyone do what they oh, do. Oh, I'm saying to do that. I'm not saying that I do that. I'm yeah. Saying that's, that's like the being nicer, you know, stopping to be so judgmental and mean and whatever. But I think that's just the jadedness that we face seeing something every day. Because I guess it could work in other industries too, you know? Mm. Like if you become interested in, you know, something that somebody does every day, I guess they could look at you the same way. So it could go both ways, depending on, you know, how, you know, how, I think our jobs are a little harder because they don't end at the end of the day, really. We don't really have, uh, I go to work at this time and my job's over at this time. It's kind of all consuming, which sometimes Mm. can be an issue when you're dating. Well, I don't know if, yeah, Billy was definitely jaded. You're right about that. And the industry is all time consuming, but it just, I just, I felt the exact same way as all I'm saying. I'm just, I really was all of a sudden like, oh, like, come on, come on. It's a little corny. It would kind of be like, as if I was talking to somebody who also wanted to pursue something similar to what I would be doing. And while I understand that like TikTok's working, it's still cheesy and it's still corny. We should be able to say that. But if they started to look at like TikTok, like it's the most amazing thing. I'm like, it's okay. (laughs) In the scope of (laughs) art, TikTok is not cool. You I'm not going to say it ain't going to equate numbers and you could do what you do. I will give you that. But don't come at me talking about, oh, excuse me, but it's cool. It's like I was watching Fran Lebowitz's um, (laughs) Netflix documentary and she was talking about not using um, like like technology, like social media, even like a cell phone for the most part. And she was making this comment that I loved. I think I mentioned this to you before. Um, so it's like, it's not that I don't know how this stuff works, why I don't do it. It's because I do know how this stuff oh, works right. is why yeah. I is why I don't do it. So all I'm saying is there are certain things that come into our orbit that we're just like, absolutely not. I would just I, like, I'm going to roll my eyes because that is corny. And to me, um, <laughs> I get your side of the point, you know, Kelly, how you were like, oh, you know, why shouldn't they have fun? Great but not around me. (laughs) I just don't want, you can't be like, cool. No, bye. No, no. That is the stance that Billy takes. And so he, you know, when they go out again, you know, it's somebody's birthday in the restaurant and, 
you know, Fred starts singing it as, you know, joining along and singing happy birthday too. And, Ugh. you know, he gets like, <laughs> Oh, I rolled my eyes through my heart when that happened. I was like, please. And so he's like, you know, stop. I tried, like, I try to be okay with it, and I'm just not sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it's like you know, it's like Game of Thrones. I, I, I want to be, I want to be all right. I just can't get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he did make his errors to like cut him so quickly, you know, if that was the only issue, but you know, you gotta go with where the heart is at, and that's yeah. that's, that's what he went with. Yeah, I mean, and Fred needs somebody that's going to be his little cheerleader and let him go and jump on stage anytime he wants to. Yeah. Oh, Bridget <laughs> Everett was so good. Oh, she's she is hysterical. So that was another nice to great, another great guest cameo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, I love I love the support. Um, before we move to the next thing, I loved the support in uh, the restaurant, the cafe because um, everyone had something to say. Everything, everyone had something to say. Matthew being as silly as it was with his like connecting to- uh, I know well, he had no, that was my, probably my favorite non-story was Matthew's story. I know, but I like that. <laughs> I like that because I feel like sometimes, you never done that? I felt like I did that recently. Oh yeah, you just laugh. Now, I'm in the midst of a story and I'm like, oh wow, there's no like real point here. But I and wanted like, to bring oh, it up, yeah. How Nate's like, that's, and that's the end of the story. Like. Yeah. <laughs> um it was good that nate and um denise were like well why do you guys get to do stuff like you know and and everyone else can like what is what is you know they were right. kind of questioning it in a lovable way um somebody made the comment like oh you know why is it that you guys could only sing and dance to which billy was like oh well, if you want to do all that stuff, do it during Halloween. Like let let that <laughs> yeah. let the actual performers like like clear away. Give us give if us you're respect. a civilian, there are days set aside to do that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Though. It's true. I mean, that's yeah, absolutely. But um, one thing that I say all the time. So why I like this show, Kelly, is because all of these lines I feel like I say to myself. I don't know why. I don't know when they come up, but I always say. Um, they're like, oh, something, something you, you're going to, uh, you know, sing and dance. And Julie goes, you think I'm a dancer? Is it, <laughs> is it the arch in my back? I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. Oh, that was a total compliment. She, and she ran with it. I because like remember be... at the end of the day, it's all about her. It's all about Julie. I think there's times <laughs> where I'll look in the mirror and, you know, the battle of the, the, the weight weight gain and weight loss and it'll be a day that i'm like oh look at this you know it's, it's coming together and i'll like hear that voice in my head i'll be like oh is it the arch in my back <laughs> so i apply it to my to my day to day these this one this episode was one of the ones that i do say these things all the time like i'll say oh he was actually an adult i'll say it just like that <laughs> and the arch in my back i say quite a bit i mean there's so many from this show but those are two of the ones and i couldn't believe they were in the same scene i was just like oh my god what a good scene yeah no i love that and i actually like denise's whole throw in about how much of a participant nate is at the movies that he's like yelling at the screen <laughs> and, you know yelling at the po- coca-cola polar bears because they're gonna get diabetes like it's just hilarious yeah i just you know those little things are funny my mom is the same way like she's constantly like talking through the movie, like doing all that. Oh, that's like... that's not great. Unless it's like <laughs> if it's a good movie, that's terrible. Yeah. I know. No, yeah. <laughs> what's gonna? So I got one of those. What's gonna happen next? I don't know. Yeah, let's watch. I, to, let's watch together. We're watching it together. <laughs> I don't know. How about let's find out. <laughs> Oh, Nate. always, always a challenge watching. Movie I movie love movie. how Nate's becoming the the MVP as well on the show. He's, he's so. Oh, funny. I know. He's like the greatest. Yeah, he is the greatest. Why do you guys get to sing and dance or perform or whatever it is that you do? <laughs> because we just we just can't. <laughs> um oh and then we jump back to poor Arthur still trying to figure out this whole PBS like pledge week situation and the um Julie goes to take him lunch because she's trying to make amends and you know, trying to kind of make things right. So she drops off lunch to him, offering up all of these crazy suggestions. And, you know, the the boss seemed to be really soft-spoken and even a little bit, you know, more, you know, sheltered than Arthur is, if you can even imagine that. And, yeah. you know, she, she was like, you know, in respect of my boundaries, I'm going to go. Yeah, they were family <laughs> friends. <laughs> I know, and he's making these, she's making these jokes that are just like, like, dude, you're not helping at all. But it's, like, but it's so it's interesting her thought process, right? Because you're going to your boyfriend's 
job. It's like, she doesn't understand that you can't, you know, you're, you're potentially putting someone else's job at risk by being disrespectful because you're not, you don't know the simple, you know, nuances of just being able to talk to, in a professional manner to someone out of your element. Right. Cause well, to her, she's always in her element. She's gonna, never out of it. That's going to start because from the beginning, she feels well, if you lose this job, we'll get you another one, you know, maybe at a for-profit, you know, place. Yeah. She's just so like unsupportive of him. And this or, did not. Like this everything's not just so easy, right? You yeah. drop that one, we'll get this one. And she doesn't really understand that there's repercussions for anything mm -hmm. because she's always a TV critic and a blog writer and like all that. So she's always spewing everything that she becomes to her head before she even has a chance to really think about it. It's already out of her mouth. So she doesn't understand like what she's doing. Yeah. So I think it's that she's just rude. I don't think it's just because of <laughs> her, her skill set. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to think quickly on my toes. Therefore, I'm going to make fun of your boss, Gabby. Like, I don't know. I think it's just Julie being Julie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, she's, she's always just that. She doesn't know any other way to be. She's just always that one same thing. Mm. So she's back at her mom's and, you know, Billy's there with her and they're watching the, the P, you know, they turn on PBS for Arthur's segment after and a full, watching it. after a full comprehensive breakdown of, of a big bang <laughs> theory, uh, Marilyn, not liking Veep, like there, it is to like what Fred said, like you, they're really into this stuff, you know, and for them, it's mm -hmm. not stuff. It's, it's their whole world, you know? Um, well, and I like too, that she's, you know, one of the funniest parts of that whole interaction to me was when Julie's like, mom, you never listen to me. You only listen to Billy. And she's like, well, I listen, I hear everything you say. You're upset because Arthur, you went to see Arthur and he was too drunk to pay attention to you. Um, no, that's not the story. <laughs> Why does Arthur always have to be drunk? She and she always low-key tries to set Julie up too. She's always yes. like, she's always like, it's the drunk thing is the problem. You're not married yet. Hold on, I got somebody else for you. And by the way, um, I have a, a nice little article about women who leave comedy to start new careers and new it's just all about, you know, Marilyn setting up the perfect daughter. A a line, I think it's gonna come up soon that I, another one that I say outside of, he's actually an adult. And um, <laughs> is, is it the arch of my back? The, the third one, or one of the ones that I say all the time is, um, she says, oh, so my daughter's in comedy. Um, that's why I don't have any grandkids. You gotta laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I say that one <laughs> all the time too. You gotta laugh. I mean, that's what, and that's why I have no grandkids. Oh, Julie. So they're watching Arthur's segment and he's just like, it's just dying. He's crashing and burning. So they run down to, she's like, I got, I got to help him. He's going to get fired. Mm. So she takes Billy. They run down to the studio and he's got a setup for the breaks where they're going to do some musical numbers. Mm -hmm. And we see, um, oh, uh, Mark Shaman again. Like he's, yeah. he's there to do, to do a bit. And he recognizes Julie um, and remembers that she insulted him in Smash and wasn't very nice. And with, with her know, killer like, recap you... yet again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with the killer recap. And it's like, oh, don't you recap TV shows? I remember what you said about me at this point. And then he's like you know what are you doing here and she's like oh the show was boring so i came to help my boy oh now i'm boring and so he's like <laughs> and I'm she out. doesn't try to be insulting when she says that that one at least like that she no just, she wasn't trying to she's arguing out of being uh insulting on the recap by saying well i'm here because <laughs> Of, is, and then Mark is like, I'm, 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 I'm out of here. Like this was, and then she just insults him again. We were going to do this for PBS and, and, and no, yeah. <laughs> terrible. Oh, uh, terrible. So now they've got to come up with something else because his, you know, his act is gone. So they decide to do um, the first ever PBS roast which turns out to be super uncomfortable but yeah. us actually saves the day they said some really interesting little jabs in that little roast and after an did. fcc fine um i was surprised <laughs> arthur was so like thankful he was like oh you really saved my butt like well you yeah. she saved your butt because she caused problems which 
allowed you not to have the gay trifecta there. Like, I don't know if she should be thanked, you know? Um, well, cause... because they got a lot of views on the videos, which ended up getting them a lot of donations. And that was the key at the uh, end of the day. I guess and views and money are the he only needed numbers. He needed his job saved. And sh- after all of that, she ultimately yeah, did it. But, but he should <laughs> still be like, I set something up really amazing. Oh, no, you're right. I don't think she should be praised for that bad behavior. <laughs> for that insensitive behavior but, but you know her her motive was good but maybe not the best <laughs> i guess it was i guess <laughs> i guess it was because billy was also helping her and their motive together was good i guess well, I mean, essentially they were really trying to help they might have had a really you know not the best way of doing it but it worked out I just don't know if I would be as happy as Arthur was. Thank you. You really, sh- what do you go? You saved my tail. Like, yeah. no, she ruined well, everything. He got fired, but then they rescinded it. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yes, it went viral. And you, we all know this day and age that changes the game, which is just like, oh, for sure. Then, but, you, can, you know, you really can't be but, mad at her. But yes, you should still watch her with the side eye, uh, Arthur, <laughs> because she still does mess certain things up. <laughs> But she does she does which good. is another reason why she'll never change because it worked out for her in the end that's right that's our julie <laughs> yeah maybe maybe when she goes to new jersey um maybe she'll change it up for at least an episode but we'll see stand by i mean we'll see <laughs> well and then it comes back around that now billy again is trying to think maybe we rethink this whole nice thing maybe i was doing it wrong and i should go back to being nice to regular people and mean to celebrities and you know, oh, be, oh because i want to get fred back because yeah. of the boy, because of the guy he was seeing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's saying that being judgmental and not letting a participator participate, I'm being way too kind. Is that what he's saying? That he should, well, oh, he's, no, like, he's you being know, too I mean. Just let him do it. He's being too mean. Oh, and he should be like, sweeter about those interactions. He's like, just, just kind of like, just let me get over it. I'll just deal with it. Let but him, if it's let something about it Chrissy Teigen, it. I got something to say. That's what he's right. saying. He's saying, oh. like, I'll be nicer to my everyday people and I'll just go back to being mean to celebrities only. Do you know that I also <laughs> think of the Mark Shaman moment when he tells Julie, um you know about smash we work really hard on those songs mm-hmm. uh and you know because we're also around we've been around a lot of podcasters and broadcast and stuff of that nature mm-hmm. even twitter people i um not that i'm i'm never mean um online i always feel like it's a corny way to get c- to come up anyway yeah um, but I, I do know that 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 particular conversation where he's saying do you know how hard it is that we, you know, that what we do uh, to create um, the songs on Smash and you, you people, you just come in and you just type it away and just kind of like wash it off. Yeah. With, with, but you're not really given anything yourself. Um, I sometimes have that in the back of my head because I've never I never really do go that route, evidently, because I've never went viral, nor do I really want to. But these people our colleagues, let's say, that do do that stuff. It, it is a little gross. You know what I mean? It's a little gross like that you are going to just like hammer something so bad. And that's not to say I've never said anything, um, you know, judgmental or critical on, on, on Twitter, but I'm talking about the people who literally try to just, the music was bad. And then this and that it's like, okay. Like just trashing it to trash it. Just trashing it to trash it. And also what are you doing? Like, are you doing anything? Like you're sitting there on your couch eating bonbons and you're going to be able to like tear down everything that I've done. You know, my contributions to hairspray to Martin short, to smash uh, right. and so i liked the way he was like yeah you people you just think you could just come in i think of that all the time when i, I, I see mean and that that yeah that is you know true it's like you know when it's real easy to sit behind a computer or behind your phone and all that and say whatever you want to say when you don't really realize all the blood sweat and tears that goes into yeah. just 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 all of this stuff i think of that all the know? time because you and i know so many people in the broadcast space i think about that all the time when these are acquaintances not our friends because our friends would never do that whack shit but some of our <laughs> acquaintances i'll see them literally like more uh entry level and then when they start coming up they start coming up coming up off the back of tearing someone down and i'm like yeah but you ain't even got a skill set and then literally all of a sudden they do or go that viral. is your skill set if your skill set if the only skill you have is tearing someone else down to get up is that really a skill like, but here's and here's the problem with numbers though because then they do it and then they get the numbers and then they're like well ronnie you don't have a big following well that's I'm, i was trying to do a good fun but it's show integrity over Come on. numbers yes, right and it's, yes, it's just like yes. how you think about it and i think in this day and age and i think we're seeing that a lot more like a lot of the 
the art is lost by numbers and, you know, virality and like all of that, because it's like really is like some of the, you know, I was reading an article just recently about a TikToker who, you know, went viral or whatever and was trying to, you know, used a song and was trying to buy the rights to it. And the artist is like, no, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give you permission to go make, you know, half a million dollars off of something I worked so hard from even if you're splitting half the money with me like no I and just he th- takes it as oh you're not giving me the time of day even though I upped your sales numbers it's like really dude like you have that audacity to kind you of you think that too like that. Kelly and I I'm agree like, yeah you know that's the way I took it was like okay I'm sorry but this song has been popular for like ever <laughs> yeah. and your little stint although you did get it in front of a new audience they've been making money off that shit forever like you're that doesn't it's it's apples and oranges like i'm gonna be like they're just dissing me like come on i think it's nice when the artist can you know kind of give back like i guess the guy who drank the um grapefruit juice and he was on the skateboard that's exactly what i'm talking about oh who said what oh (laughs) yeah he's trying to make it an nft where he can make money off of it and bank it but you know they're the you know uh what's her name is saying no and it's oh, like you gotta look we'll at both have to sides. Talk of it. about it's this like on, on, our, on, our, so, on our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, you can't just go so quick to be like, they're not even acknowledging me and the, you know, my artist. It's yeah. like it's apples and oranges. Not to knock what he what he's doing. And hey, everybody should be able to try to make money however they can, mm-hmm. especially, you know, with the way that the media is changing and all that. And I'm not knocking that, but it's like the disrespect and the reaction of somebody's hard work, you know, thinking it's so easy just to take it. Like you're really making that big of a dent to make it better. That's just arrogant. Yeah. Like I'm a big, and it it might not even be him. It could just be the people that are working for him that are making it seem that way. Right. Yeah. So I think, I think it's just interesting. I think, and this is why I like Julie's character because she is a recapper, but like some people are recappers and they, they keep it fun. They keep it funny. They keep it edgy. They do make mean jokes, Mm -hmm. I guess, but they're not like, don't, I don't know. I just, the term I like to do is like, I don't want to eat off anybody. You know what I mean? I don't want to eat right. off anyone else's thing. In theory though, as a contrast, somebody could say, oh, well, difficult people, difficult podcasters, whatever it is. But notice we don't come in here, you know, dogging anyone. This is just like good, clean fun. It's just something to think about. But uh, I, that that made me think of this and then this and then this, yeah. because it's happened well, before. It's different I dr- when you appreciate someone, the work of someone else and you're, yeah. you know, getting into the mix of it and giving your interpretation because our is up to interpretation right Mm -hmm. so it's like to divulge and get into it is not you know tearing it apart and i think that's the big difference it's like when you're just jumping to tear it what are you doing i just think don't give yourself that much self-importance if you're the recapper like you could be a good recapper don't get just give yourself the self-importance because you put on your favorite song you did a little wiggle to tiktok and all of a sudden you feel like you have more ownership of something the nft thing you could do for yourself And for other things that you do, but I remember looking at that guy's stuff. He, this wasn't like a, you know, how it's like, looks as if it's like, oh, he was just on a skateboard and I guess he like Mm -hmm. missed work. And no, he was doing like goofy, corny participator (laughs) TikToks forever. This is just the one that hit. I remember the kid that really um, came up with the dance for the uh, Drake song, that Kiki, do you love me song? And I also feel like he sort of wanted more. And it's like Drake's song is going to be Drake's song regardless. You do something, you're eating off them slow down is all i'm saying or just be respectful about it like you know it can be like oh it's a bummer that they didn't want to let me do it with their song but it's cool though i respect that and i'm gonna still try to do my own thing and you know but like to make the comment like oh they're just they're not giving me the respect i deserve because i did that what what well you you didn't create anything you don't deserve respect that's what you you have not created anything you know like he created something but it's like to be on that level of self-importance you're right it's like wow well but and and the reason i mentioned that is that that little dialogue of mark telling julie has stuck with me and again i say that i'm not even anyone who entertains that but there's been Mm -hmm. jobs i've worked that have like like companies that have like oh like i've produced uh, a podcast or whatnot and they would be like oh make it um make it clickbaity or do this everyone wants to do the most shady of things and I always kind of kept that in my head. I was like, okay, if you go for that bait, you're just, it, it will create success for you. I'm not saying it won't, but I always keep that fabric in my head of Mark saying, 
do you know how hard it is that we do all, you know, what we do on, on right. Smash? Yeah. And you could come in here without doing nothing and just tear it down. So I don't want to keep reiterating that, but that no, was yeah. something that stuck with me in my broadcast well, scope because I'm in, I'm in the space too, where I'm like, I've been broadcasting since 2003 and you see somebody yesterday who goes viral and all of a sudden they have a career and I don't, I, it, the lure to do whack shit online is crazy, but Luckily, right. we do not do that because we are sophisticated. <laughs> yes, we're definitely something. <laughs> yeah, see who who <laughs> who would have knew that this show brought out the sophistication of Kelly with the arm and Ronnie with the uh, the old laugh over here. <laughs> you know. Oh my gosh! But you know, it kind of comes full circle, and they get a little taste of their own medicine. But you know, by the end of the episode, which that's one thing that I do love about every episode of this show is you kind of see the shit come back around. And that's what makes it super interesting to me as a viewer, mm -hmm. because you see kind of this little like self-importance, a little bit of selfish behavior, but then it, by the end of the episode, it hits them back and they're like, well, okay. Cause they go, um, Billy's deciding he wants, you know, to try to get Fred back. So he emails him, but Fred never responds. Mm -hmm. So he's got tickets to Africa Douglas and he takes um, Julie to go to the show and they see Fred there. Um, mm -hmm with the date yeah with malachi so, malachi yes yeah. with malachi he's on a date and he's mordecai you know billy mordecai i don't remember yeah. who was one of those <laughs> um but billy is like you know he's a little bit bummed about it and then abraka is asking for a volunteer and he's like well should i do it and julie's like oh i don't know you might want to really think about that he's like well, maybe he'll see that you know i'm okay with everything and try to get me <laughs> back so he goes and does it and makes a fool out of himself yeah and what do you, you think know, about participating are you are you into that you <sighs> i personally am not a big participator i don't really like to participate in anything i never really kind of have like i go to karaoke but i don't jump up and sing like you know but i love to watch yeah so anybody that wants to do it i i'm i love a show and i've you know yeah. i'm a big fan of entertainment in general so i'm okay with participators i wouldn't knock it like you know if it's like my my date and so it just kind of depends on the situation i might be a little like jaded as we were talking about earlier you're saying if you're general, dating you're saying if you're dating somebody and they call you wouldn't participate then because you're trying to keep it cool I wouldn't participate at all, but I'm talking about like if my date did, I don't know how I would feel about that. But, <laughs> I think it has to have um, a reason. Like I've been, yeah. the only times I've ever went up, because, uh, you know, a lot of times people would think you do you do a podcast like you're an outgoing person and maybe right. to a degree, but like I'm, I'm still as much of a shy person I probably was in high school as I am now. Yeah. So I'm not like rushing to do that. Like I, I would rather like host <laughs> a live TV show than like just participate, I guess. <laughs> um, however, the times I have done it has been more when it was like a relevant time. I think we went to, for one of my birthdays, we went to Flaming Saddles and you were there and I had to go yes. up. I had to go up. Yes. I remember I made the comment. Um, the drag queen says, oh, how old are you? It says 37, one step closer to heaven. And then, and then, <laughs> and then the drag queen goes, you think you're getting into heaven, bitch? Um, <laughs> so in but that regard. I, I didn't hassle you about that. No, no, you you didn't. But I'm saying, like, in that regard, you go up and do it. In in New yeah. York, one time at Pieces Bar, um, I went up. Uh, it was Britta, Britta Filter was hosting the night, and I went up there because it, I was I was essentially coming. It was like a going away thing, uh, not permanently, mm -hmm. but a going away thing. So the friends that I was with were like, "Oh yeah, you should go up there." And I was like, "Oh my god, I don't really want to participate," you know. But I was yeah. leaving, so I think participate for a reason. And you know, Billy, in fairness, did have a reason because he wanted to kind he did. of show a different yeah. side but he, he looked did. terrible <laughs> and he made everyone <laughs> laugh at him not with him <laughs> right and we you know at the end of it when fred came back he kind of gave him a you know he like burned him a bit he was like you know oh watching you know i, I thought i saw a little bit of empathy there and he's like yeah i did he's yeah. like yeah watching somebody on stage make a fool out of themselves like that such a turn off <laughs> <laughs> like, so pathetic <laughs> but that's basically what he told him when he broke up with him was yeah. basically that so he, so again he got it right back and then he got another hit to the gut yeah yep, yep they yep. were trying to get into the simpson party because julie got invited on accident yeah <laughs> she got invited by accident and 
she wasn't really on the list. And so, you know, they're talking amongst each other and being like, okay, well, I guess we're not invited because she's like, it's not because everybody hates us. And Billy's like, no, it's because oh, nobody right. knows who we are. Right. Because the, the whole episode, Billy's starting yeah. to think all these things are happening because he's just, you know, he lost the watch what happens live opportunity because he's being right. mean. And this was a perfect example where Julie's like, no, we just, we're just not known. <laughs> we're not yeah. adored. And, you know, he had went through his, his little trials of, of dating Fred, but that, that moment though, when Martin short walks up is just like, uh, I like moments like that because you'll be having the worst, most difficult day. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, like there's something here, some redeeming moment, but that was not the case here. That was not the case. No, he's like, Oh, Billy, is it? And he's like, Oh my God. Yes. Martin short. I love you. Like, how do you, how do you know me? Um, you know, Billy Epstein, have you seen my stand up? And he's like, Oh gosh, no. <laughs> he was like, I wouldn't think you have stand up, but if you do, you shouldn't. <laughs> He's like, you're the least charismatic person. But you have no charisma. Yeah, but maybe that's what you're good at. I don't know. You could tell. Oh. It was amazing. Like, which, that was such a great, like, uh, like wrap up of the show. Which is so good for the for the fact that we remember we're, we're brought up as, like, the greatest tragedy is that Martin Short doesn't have an EGOT. And then to touch and taste Martin Short in the episode was like, ah, it was so, so good. Uh, I know. And then he tells Julie that she <laughs> reminds him of, like, a young Sherry Lewis. And he's like, no, 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 Jerry Lewis. You got big teeth. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you got the big old. <laughs> oh, that man is funny. That man is funny. And I could only imagine what Billy was feeling after embarrassing himself at Africa Douglas's show. And then only to be uh, further disappointed that nobody, um, nobody knows about him and they don't no. really no. believe in his talents. So no. I, I've been there. Sometimes I feel like I still am Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what, what you mean. Certainly one of my favorite episodes. Um, Mostly because, like I say, I'll say that, oh, is it the arch in my back? I'll say uh, because he's an ad, he's actually an adult. Uh, and then that you, you got to laugh. I say those all the time. I just feel like this was a, uh, a episode that really um, there was so much. Brought to out it. all three of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I I watched this one over and over and over. Can't watch Kate McKinnon without thinking of Abraka Douglas. Oh, she's um, the best. And I'm going to start saying that now, too. I'm going to start saying what Fred said. Um, yeah, single and ready. <laughs> single and ready. <laughs> Arrested, rested. He goes, single, rested. Yeah, single and, and ready. rested, yeah. I we got like a lot that. of great stuff from this episode. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it makes you think about, you know, is it really beneficial to be mean to people? Maybe check yourself a little bit and see, like, how mean should you be? Or should you be at all? Or maybe I, you shouldn't care. Okay, I, don't I got. Know. What do you do? You okay? I have an opinion. Do you? What do you think? Do you think something of that? Because I, I think it shouldn't be one or the other. I think it's it's cheesy to be like I'm gonna be the nice person when like I think it's, <laughs> the no. world's burning, <laughs> <laughs> or to be like I'm a bitch or I'm an asshole and this is just like what I do. It's like right, and you just got ten thousand dollars for an ad on your like, you know what I mean? Like you're doing well, right. you're still like that angry. Like it just at some point we know it doesn't make sense. So I just think you got to balance that line. So definitely balance. Yeah. Good critique is good. Like I said, I have I'm kind of like oh maybe I've done a recap where I've been like oh gosh this housewife is the worst. Um, <laughs> specifically, I'm speaking of Kyle Richards from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which there could not be a less interesting character ever to hit the television ever, ever since a very long time ever uh, but but like to do <laughs> to do it as this weird practice where people try to like make it a viral moment and it's just it just takes away from like quality entertainment and that's what right. i like about julie and billy while they're frustrated while they're you know getting put through their paces in new york city and trying to make something of themselves they still are sticking to the craft which i think is so so good uh may i mention something of course of <laughs> i course. um we had talked about how your arm is 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 still not healed. So yeah. we talked about how you were um, not with all the mobility. I think I've made up the mobility because I've never talked with my hand <laughs> as much as like, I have. You're, tr you're trying to make up for me because I yeah, can't I'm, really do anything. I'm over here <laughs> like, like I'm kind of like rapping I'm sorry, right I'm now. I'm like lopsided and a little yeah. like, I'm just kind of like off kilt because i'm afraid if i lean i'll put too much pressure i'm just gonna break it all over again and it's like <sighs> my nightmare right now when but i'm a, when i'm a millionaire or whatever the case may be i'll i'll think <laughs> i'll think back of these moments of uh 
the the stress of of uh, the bootleg setup that we are both going through, Kelly with the bootleg arm. But you know, we'll have to think about that years years ago and be like, Damn. I mean, if I had my sling on, it would be even worse because all you would hear would be like the Velcro and the mess. Yeah, I thought you were gonna like... wear it. I thought you had told me once no. you were gonna well, wear I'm it. I've been trying we said... to exercise this, so okay. anytime I don't have to have it on, I try not to because I'm supposed to be trying to get my mobility back. Mm-hmm. Question, nasty question, if I may. Um, I don't know. Are you well, are you a particular woman that does like to give self-pleasure? <laughs> we didn't talk, we didn't we didn't speak about this. This just kind of happened. <laughs> okay, I'll say my story first. Okay. So I um want <laughs> I um, I'm not left-handed. Okay, so okay, the hand that's hurt is is it's my is, left hand and I'm oh, okay. Left hand. So if you were to go downtown Austin, um you... I love this. this is what you're thinking about. I've got a broken elbow. This is what you're no, because I'm gonna tell you a story. Okay, God, sorry, sorry. God, I just was wondering <laughs> if it put a hindrance on the old, you know, pleasure mobile. So for me, <laughs> I um I like I gotta I gotta add it up in my head. I was okay. I got bit in my right hand. So I was always, uh, I was always a right hander, right? My mm-hmm. whole life. I was a right hander. And then I got bit by a Rottweiler. And so then mm-hmm. my, my right hand was not usable. Um, so then I was like, Oh gosh, it's going to be, you know, getting better recovering for whatever amount of months. So I was like, Oh, I'm just going to not, you know, go for, go for a spin. And then all of a sudden, like <laughs> you start entertaining the left hand and Gradually, and then all of a sudden you're ambidextrous. <laughs> gradually, it becomes more <laughs> of a comfort. And so I became a left hander. And now I can't go back to the right hand for the life of me. Not at all. That's like the hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, I guess you don't have that problem. But imagine if you would have hurt the arm that was the uh, the party, you would well, have. Well, one thing that's that's interesting, and so off of, like off that stuff, but just in general with things that I do, I didn't realize how much of an ambidextrous person I actually am and all the things, the everyday little things that I do with my left hand, like brush my teeth and, mm. you know, sew and like random, cause I, I write with my right hand and my right hand is my prominent hand, but I do so many little things with my left hand that I didn't realize until this happens because I'm like, I can't do it. Like it's yeah. uncomfortable to do it with my right hand. It's just, it became kind of like an interesting, like awareness that I just didn't realize. Well, we hope, we hope you get better. And we hope that <laughs> for the life of us, we don't talk about this kind of stuff. Cause this is two episodes in a row. I think last time I, <laughs> I offered you a, a devil's three way without me in it, but I was like, you know, let, I'll be sure to get my head out of the gutter on the next episode. And we'll be back oh, to no. recapping fun stuff. difficult people on our podcast, <laughs> difficult podcasters real quick. Should we do our giveaway? Because tell us yes, about what the so giveaway we, is and I'll, um, I'll hit you yeah. with the winner. Viridian Row um, made us the cutest quote t-shirt from episode one. It's a quote from Billy and, um, you know, we'll throw a photo up so you can see what it looks like. And we had um, a Instagram contest and we have our winner, Ronnie, who is our winner of this lovely tea. This one is really good. Um, so based on the criteria uh, of Viridian <laughs> Row, which is our sponsor, um, our winner is Robert Neptune. Okay. Robert Neptune, the Yay! Instagram handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Instagram mm-hmm. handle is nep 2 nep N-E-P 2 N-E-P. Can I give you a fun fact about old Robert? Um, Robert, yes, a fun fact that matches with difficult people. Difficult people, of course, this episode, episode number three, started off with uh Andy Cohen. Um, Andy Cohen actually did uh, a, a series, um, one of the Watch What Happens Live this year, where they did a couple getting married. Well, he and his husband, Robert Neptune, was was the guy who got married to his husband on oh, live television, cool. Patty LaBelle. Because you know how like people couldn't do what they wanted to do, so they yeah. had to make al- ulterior uh, marriage uh, arrangements. Well, Robert Neptune is not only our ViridianRoad.com winner for Difficult Podcasters, but he also got married on live TV. Can you believe well, that? What a lucky, what a lucky guy. That's awesome. So yeah, that's like the six degrees of separation that right. Andy Cohen officiated his wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Robert, we will DM you with details on how to collect your t-shirt and get sizing and shipping info and all that to you. So just look out for that. That's Thanks very nice. so much for participating and being a participant. <laughs> 
<laughs> you are a participator. Um, this has been Difficult Podcasters. Uh, difficultpodcasters.com is the website. Viridian Row is the sponsor. Uh, viridianrow.com to go see all the um, all the stuff. There's so much stuff yeah, over there. Yeah, so much cute stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and follow us, please, on social at Difficult Podcasters. And me, if you want to, at Kelly with an IEO79 on all the platforms as well. Um, <laughs> but I get it too. It's hard. It's hard competitively because everyone's difficult to... bang issues today. Okay. Too. Well, then we'll wrap up. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Thank you, Kelly. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye, guys.